The next step is to make out our data table for our velocity time graph. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to find the time intervals, uh, the time between the time intervals. So in other words, what's the time between 1.1 1 .1 and 1 and 2.2, 2.2 and 3, so on and so forth. We're going to figure out how long it took to complete the interval. So how long did it go take to go from 0 to 5 yards? We're going to write that down. Then the last thing we're going to do once we have that is we're going to find our average velocity. So I've done the first calculation for you, which is to find the time between 0 to 5 yards, which is between 1.1 and 2.2. And so the way you do that is you take your first value, 1.1, your second value, 2.2, you add them up. Then you're going to divide by 2 to find the average, okay, which will give you the number right between. So 1.1 plus 2.2 is going to give you 3.3. 3.3 divided by 2 is going to give you 1.65. Now, since our values have only two significant digits or two, two decimal places, that's all we can write down. So here it is at 1.7, and we're going to put 1.7 right here on the first line. So, and there it is at 1.7. Now, I'm not going to go ahead and go through all the calculations. I'm going to trust that you guys can know how to plug these numbers into your calculator and go through step by step. So the next one would be 2.2 divided 2.2 plus 3 divided by 2, and that number would go there. So when I come back to you, this whole thing will be filled out uh, and with you knowing how to do it. All right, so as you can see, I have completed the x-axis for you for the time intervals. And each one of these times is exactly between these. And with the exception of a couple of them where I had to round up because I wanted to keep it at two, di two digits uh, or one digit behind the decimal point. Now we're going to do time to complete the interval. So from 0 to 5, we're going to take... So from here, uh, that's 0 yards to 5 yards. That starts at 1.1 uh, seconds to 2.2. One, so we take the larger value, which is 2.2, minus the smaller value, which is 1.1. 2.2 minus 1.1 gives you 1.1. So I put right in here, I'm going to put right in here, 1.1. The next interval is going to be from 5 to 10. So from 5 to 10, so we have 2.2 to 3. So we're going to take 3 minus 2.2, and that gives us 0.8. So we're going to put 0.8 right here. And so there we are with 0 0.8. Now, I'm not going to show you the calculations for the rest of these. I'm just going to go ahead and fill the rest of these in for you. I'm sure you guys can keep going through here. 10 to 15, 10 to 15, that's 3.6 minus 0, uh, and then 4.2 minus 3.6, so on and so forth, and then put them in these marks right here. I'm sure you guys could do that on your own. I'm just going to fill it out for you. So as you can see, I filled the rest of this out for you, and, you're, and hopefully you did the calculations on your own, so you'll have the values yourself. Next one is to do the average velocity. So what I'm going to do is take the average distance, so the, or the distance covered, which uh, in this first case goes from 0 to 5. So you take your largest value, 5, minus your smallest value, which is 0. That's going to give you 5. And then you're going to divide that by your time interval. The time interval for the first section is 1.1. 1 .1. 5 divided by 1.1 1 .1 gives you a time of about 4.5. Four, five, four, five, four, five, but we only need these first two digits. So I'm going to write that down on this axis. And there we have it. So 4.5 is right here, 4.5. So let's change it up for the next one. The velocity for the next interval includes the distance between 5 yards to 10 yards. So I'll start out with 10 and subtract Five from that, and that covers our distance interval. And that particular was uh, that particular distance was covered in a time of point zero point eight seconds. So a zero point eight seconds. Now that will equal um, five divided by zero point eight, and that gives us a grand total of 6.25, which rounds up to 
So now I'm going to take the 6.3 and I'm going to plug it into my average velocity for this one. All right, so the next one is going to go from 15 to 10, and it will do 15 to 10 in 0.6 seconds. So I put 0.6 seconds here. 15 minus 10 gives me 5. 5 divided by 0.6 is going to give me 8.3, so 8.3 goes right here. Okay, so this is the last calculation I'm going to show you guys, and then I'm going to go ahead and fill in the rest of the data table. So you notice it's 8.3 because it's going to, and it's, going to, it's the same. It's the same as one before because the difference is still 5 and the time interval is still the same. The only ones that are going to be different are going to be this one and this one. But the, the this is going to be 8.3. This will be 8.3. Oh, sorry, this will be 8.3. This will be 8.3. This one will be 8.3. This is going to be 10 and this will be 10. So when I come back, this whole thing is going to be filled in. Okay, so this is what your completed data table should look like. Uh, so make sure that your calculate well, after you do your calculations, your data table looks very much like this. And when I continue with the next video, we'll show you guys how to graph it. Now that we've finished up the axes or the uh, the table, you we're going to graph the x-axis. The time intervals will be the x-axis here, and the average velocities will go here. So. For the time intervals, I'm just going to use the same scale we had before, where every third one is a second. So one, two, three, and then one, two, three, and so on and so forth. For the y-axis, well, we have a maximum value of 10. See, we have it right here and right here. So I'm going to set it, since we have four, uh, four <coughs> sorry, 20 going up, it would go every two. So that's one to all the way up to 10. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in for you. So you can see we've labeled the x-axis, which is time, the y-axis, which is velocity. Now it's just a matter of putting these points and these points onto the graph. <clears throat> so starting off, we have 1.7 and 4.5. So we go here, 1.7 is going to be right here, 4.5 will be right about here, and I'll put a dot right there. The next one, 2.6 and 6.3, so we got 2.6 and 6.3 right there. I think you guys get the idea now, so what I'm going to do is going to have, fill this out and then we'll talk about it in just a second like this. So now you can see that we have made our plot and we've done our plot that's going up like this. And then we have an interesting pattern here. We've got two down here and one up here. Two down here and one up here. Well, that's due to the fact that sometimes we measured the difference in time to be 0.6 and every third one we measured to be about 0.5. Well, that's because we only took it to the nearest tenth of a <clears throat> tenth of a second. If we did it closer to a hundredths of a second, we'd probably this line would probably be a little bit closer to more of a horizontal line. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take the average between these, these, uh, this cluster right here, and the average is going to be kind of about right here. So that's where I'm going to draw a line, a nice horizontal line going like so. And there's our, there's our line right here. Now we've got to do this line right here. And hopefully you guys know what's going on right here and right here. So we have a slope right here for a velocity time graph. And we ha we'll have a flat line right here. So let me go ahead and put the sloped line right here in purple. And there's our purple line right here. And so our... Uh, our runner accelerates here, his velocity is changing, and at this point he maintains a constant velocity throughout the rest of the run. And now it's time to answer the questions.